So along this line, we're seeing all different kinds of wind damage. Actually, at the National Weather Service office itself, they are seeing power lines down on the north side of North Webster. And this is a well-traveled road in Fort Wayne. And it has very well likely not been plowed or barely been plowed. And even down by the airport, we're also having some reports of some trees down in power outages. Now uh, that area of more intense wind moving along uh, US 27, that's also going to be tracking farther to the east. Those green colors, which are the inflow, that's the air moving into the storm. Typically that will get cut off by some of the rain that's coming in. And that's exactly what we're seeing on radar, which is a great sign in terms of weakening. Uh, we saw snow covered roads. That's still the story here. Just about everything's going to be covered in snow, even in my jacket, the little bit of time I've been out here. These green colors indicate winds moving towards the radar. Those reds and bright yellows indicate winds moving away from the radar. When we see those moving in a counterclockwise direction and they're very bright and close together, then indicates some strong rotation. And this line, though, is developing a little bit closer to us. So it's not as likely then we're going to see that weakening that we may right. typically see as the line pushes east because it's developing here right in our own backyard. Well, you know me. I'm looking at Tuesday, and I think it looks cold. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Last week when it was uh, in the 70s, I'm she's like, complaining oh, it's that's cold. That's stay inside. Are you serious? That's like perfect that's weather. Cold. Sunny and 70. We're getting some mixed signals from our weather models and the forecast data we're getting in. That's resulting in some lower levels of confidence in where exactly the center of this storm is going to go. So that's having an effect in our ability to predict those snow totals and also the travel impact. It's impossible to talk about building a climate-friendly future without renewable energy sources. A little bit of drier air now working into some of our southwestern areas. We'll see if that holds as it pushes off to the north and east, but also some heavier bands of snow now actually moving into Fort Wayne. You know, I always said as a senior prank that I wanted to call in, you know, and like arrange a, a delay <laughs> through the the news. I could yeah, do that actually. this one is real. This one is real, so yeah, enjoy but that. but this is please. a real two-hour <laughs> delay. Unusually warm air near the Gulf of Mexico pushed north, meeting cold December air. That provided the spark for a system that would produce over 40 tornadoes. I'm ashamed. I'm ready for it. I'm ashamed to admit, I think I was kind of harassing you last night for turning the heat on. <laughs> I didn't actually turn it on. I actually you did. You turned it on? Yeah, and I was the one like, nah, it's too early. No, it's I didn't turn it on. I did. I had to this morning. It was too cold. <laughs> so yes, tonight uh, roads will be poor thanks to the snow we're seeing right now. But then we also have to deal with uh, those rapidly dropping temperatures that could cause some flash freezing overnight and impact your Friday morning commute. You still need to take shelter again, get to the innermost room of your home on the lowest level and try to get into a sturdy structure too. where that area of circulation is located that uh, you're probably not going to see any tornado. It's very likely going to be rain wrapped. The radar estimating that 75 mile per hour wind gusts. And notice this is close to the radar in North Webster. The closer you are to the radar, the closer to the ground we're seeing in the storm. So it's very likely these winds are actually reaching the ground in Noble County that's headed to the northeast towards places like Albion, Kendallville. Again, damaging winds will by far be the main threat. Some of those rather significant near 80 miles per hour or so. And that continues to be the main threat this evening are those strong straight line winds that can produce damage similar to a tornado. You see a bit of a drop in the lightning a little bit as that's moved east. That can indicate some weakening. We'll see how much that trend continues. And if you're in a vehicle that is lower to the ground, uh, you're definitely going to have some issues uh, getting out this morning, especially on some of these roads that are not major roads. In case you're wondering why we haven't been showing what it looks like from the front of Storm Tracker 21, it's because that's what it looks like. The snow has covered the camera. That's the million dollar question, guys. Everyone concerned about the rain this evening. But some good news. It's dry right now. A look off to the uh, northwest here. You just see some cloudier skies. It is a bit windy, a bit breezy, and yes, chilly as the temperatures have fallen a bit. Fort Wayne International Airport has only picked up an inch and a half of snow so far this year. And again, behind me, you can see there's no snow on the ground.
morning we were talking about a winter weather advisory. Now a winter storm warning has been issued for all of our counties. It begins a little earlier, 10 p.m. tonight, and extends through 7 a.m. Tuesday. So this is going to be a prolonged winter event. That snow not quite here yet, just some clouds moving in on storm track satellite and radar. But you can see there's a little bit of snow already beginning to fill in into northern Illinois here. And look at how expansive this system is. That snow all the way back into western Texas, even a little bit into New Mexico. This is all one expansive system, and it's going to be bringing snow to us in several waves. So let's time it out for you on future track. Uh, tonight, again, that snow begins to arrive close to midnight, give or take a few hours before or after. This is at 1 a.m. And tonight's round that will extend into Monday morning, a bit more scattered of snow and some lighter snow at that. So Yes, your Monday morning commute likely will be slick or have some slick spots, but it's going to be a lighter amount of snow. We're talking close to around one to three inches. Then a lull in the action. We may very well not even see any snow fall late Monday morning and most of Monday afternoon. But don't be deceived by that because in the early evening hours, round two of the snow arrives around five, four, five or four p.m. and continues to push through very heavy snow falling through the night Monday and even in those overnight hours into Tuesday morning. That's when most of the snow will arrive and will fall and cause most of those issues Monday night into Tuesday. So again, two waves here. Round one arrives tonight. That's going to be that lighter round around midnight or so. Some of that could even still be lingering in to your morning commute. Then that break in the action around midday before the snow ramps back up Monday night and extending even into Tuesday morning. So as you might imagine, tonight we will see those slick spots continuing on into tomorrow morning. But again, we will have a lull in the snow and that will give crews some time to help clean up the roads around midday tomorrow in the afternoon. But when round two arrives, that's when more slick conditions and really the worst conditions will be around in the evening tomorrow and into Tuesday morning. And also this is going to be a fluffy snow. So we anticipate some drifting on area roadways in addition to roads just being snow covered due to the sheer amount of snow. And again, the timing around midnight tonight through around 9 a.m. tomorrow is round one. Round two arrives tomorrow afternoon, extending into Tuesday morning. And here's a look at those totals. Here's our official snowfall forecast. Again, we've had to ramp this up now due to some recent forecast data coming in. Seven to 11 inches, yes, double digits for those southeastern areas, a little lighter off to the northwest. And again, generally, as you move from northwest to southeast, we're going to see those totals increase. So the best chances for seeing double digit totals will be our southeastern counties, Jay County, Adams County, Van Wert County, Mercer County. And again, do keep in mind those multiple rounds of snow. So with some impacts there Monday into Tuesday. That's why they're highlighted in red, along with some cold temperatures, too. We're also watching another system set to arrive on Thursday. That's again why that day is highlighted in red, as we could see even more snow then. Gosh, Ariel. when does it end? <laughs> it's like, it keeps coming, doesn't You're speechless it? right I am. now. It I'm does speechless. keep coming. We're in a very active pattern. If there's any silver lining, we could see a slight warm up by the weekend. And by slight warm up, I mean temperatures in the 30s. That's, so. I'm looking hey, forward to that. That's something sure. to look forward to, right? All right, <laughs> Full Gabe, up team thank coverage you. That's nice. Yes, all right.